Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lynette and it's a Tourism channel. I'm very excited to be here. Like you can see in our midst, we have the amazing Mr. Kanri Mugume. But before you go any further, if it's your first time on my channel, feel free to subscribe over there. Hit me up in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this content. Yeah, and let's dive right in. All right. So, hi Mr. Mugume. Hi. Good I'm to excited. Have you <laughs> Good to have you in the show. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm used to hosting. <laughs> Wow. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm used to being the one hosting, so yeah, I'm a guest so, today. So, okay. Yeah, so please, uh, you've done so much. You're a senior journalist at NBS. Yeah. But please, feel free to introduce yourself to our viewers. Tell us what you do and everything. Okay, my name is Kanare Mugume. I'm a senior investigative reporter at NBS Television. I'm also a podcaster. I'm a radio show oh, host. Oh, podcaster. Yeah, I do podcasts. I'm also a radio show host and also I do political reporting here at oh, NBS. Yeah. yeah, politics. Ooh. So here we're just going to talk about tourism, the fun things in life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Mr. Kanri, which is your best tourism location in Uganda? Tourism location, I think I think Fort Porto has the, one of the best tourism locations in in Uganda. There's, uh, there's, there's a number of crater lakes where yes. you stand yeah. on top of a hill and I mean you watch about seven crater lakes in a range while there are while there are mountains with fog in in the background and then on the extreme left is a is Fort Porto town it's it's amazing so have I've, you have you been to Maverika in Namiru? I've not been there but I would love to go there. I think it's also a beautiful place. Yeah. yeah. No, it, the, the, just because uh, a few years ago, there's a hike that we did and we still saw those crater lakes just close to the Maverick and Namiru. So, oh, yeah. So you, you know the crater lakes yes, I'm about. It's so yes, beautiful. And now yeah. it has rained. So the water levels in the crater lakes have gone up. So it looks extremely beautiful. And then the green around them. And then when you go very close to the crater lakes, you're able to see even the reptiles inside the lake. Oh, there are so reptiles do do swimming. Fishing? No, they don't fish there. I don't think there's fish inside there, or maybe there is, but they don't do fishing there, just for the beauty. Maybe sometime when I work and gain a lot of money, I'll have to buy land overseeing a crater lake. Wow. It's, it's beautiful there. I know, I can imagine. Yeah. Likewise, Kasese is one of my, my best areas, and because of the hills mm. and everything, so mm. Fort Potro is. And I know they call now it's a city. It's Fort Potro city. Oh, Fort Potro city, yeah. 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 And now the culture, I think, I think the culture is rich. The Omukama and everything. Yes, yes, yes. I've been to the palace before. Mm. I've had the courtesy visit to the king. Ah, He's okay. an amazing guy, and uh, he welcomed us really well. But also the palace is situated on a hill that oversees the entire Fort Potro. Wow. That's also amazing to note. Yeah. Mm. So, Mr. Kanri, tell us about your culture. Which tribe are you? You know what's tourism like in your culture? What do you think we can market as a as a tourism product from well, your culture? Well, well, to be honest, I don't like talking about my tribe because I feel like it's not really important. Okay. But mm -hmm. I'll talk about it for the sake of it. But I don't think it's important to really prioritize tribes. Mm -hmm. However, there are traditions in Uganda I think we should appreciate. Yes. But for the sake of that, appreciating our traditions and cultures, then I don't think I have a problem with speaking about my tribe. So um, I'm in Nyankori, and one of the best things I think we have is Ishabu. Ishabu is I made out Ishabu. of ghee. You love it? Yes. Yeah, it's amazing. Most of the restaurants you go to, you will not find Ishabu. But if the restaurant is owned by someone from Western Uganda, at least you'll find a piece of it. So Ishabu is made out of ghee and rock salt. Oh. How do you call it in, in, in Uganda? It's sura. Yes, yes, it's yes, sura. It's, it's sura. So, uh, ghee with it's sura and then little water, you keep on, and then over time, you know ghee is sort of yellowish? Yes. Creamish? Yes. Be because of the rock salt, so the rock salt purifies the ghee, it turns into super white, and then turns into a sauce. It's one of the things that I think has not been marketed so well. We've not even... Um, branded it the culinary tourism yeah it, it should be part of those on the to-do list yeah oh wow so that's kalo and the shabu aha uh -huh. so a shabu is eaten with together with kalo you know kalo i think it's, yes. it's made here in, in central uganda yeah. and sometimes we even put we even put pieces of meat roasted in a shabu roasted meat 
it's amazing. It's, I can it's, see it's you're delicious. getting excited. Yeah, I'm thinking about it right now. I should go for lunch wow. for it. Mm, <laughs> I love Kaloa and the Shawe, personally. You just ate before? Yeah, and oh, I love amazing. it. You know, it has been a it's, while. It's like the Luwombo for the central Uganda. Mm. It's, you know, Luwombo they will prepare. These days I even see Luwombo for Ginas. Yeah, it's, it's, there is Gina at Luwombo. That, that I had never seen. So mm. I, I had it recently and it's amazing. It's it, the way it tastes, the aroma. So that's the same with the shabu. Mm. Take a lot of time to make it, but when it does come out really it's well, worth it. it's worth it. Ah, so culinary tourism is one point that you think you think we should market a lot in, in tourism. Yes, absolutely. All our cultures, I think, have uh, things that we can market in culinary tourism. True, true. Uh, look at Luombo, look at Shawe. I don't know what is done in Fort Porto, or the Batoro, or the Banyoro. I don't know what is done. In the north, in the north, they, the they, they have bo, maracuá. I love them. Oh, God, I don't know. I've had over D. I've never tested it, yeah. but I think it's I think amazing. The, the way it bo looks. Yeah. On maracuá, where I they so. put ginat paste with the greens and all those yes, beautiful things. Yes, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. Wow. Okay, so we should boost tourism through the culinary arts. Absolutely. You know, culturally, it's, it's, and I feel every culture tourism product. Mainly the food, they all have a story they tell. Yes, yes, there's when a story behind When they're making the Luombo, there's mm. a story behind. What's the story behind a shabu? Ha, I'm not sure about the story behind a shabu, but we are. We, I come from Bragon where we are cattle rearers. Yes. So we graze a lot of cattle. But apart from milk, there's ghee. Ghee, we have it, of course, with food, but then a shabu is a byproduct of ghee. Okay. The way you see yogurt, a byproduct of milk. Yes. Yes. So, ghee is a byproduct. Of, I don't know the story behind it and how it came about, but I think it's 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 uh, it's it has a story. I don't know what the story is. I just yeah. I just enjoy the delicacy, not the story. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know the story is really what we use to sell more. But we're going to figure out the story and one of Next these. Next time I appear back here on the channel, I'm going to yeah. tell the story. Shall we? Yeah. yeah. That would be great. That would be great. So, Mr. Ka Mr. Ka <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. What do you think about the tourism industry in Uganda generally? What do you think about I think about we're doing it? great. I mean, the tourism contributes about um, 1 trillion Ugandan shillings to the national total GDP, rather, not national, yeah. total GDP. Uh, but now, because of COVID, I think it has now gone down. Mm -hmm. I think we need to start thinking about how to domestic, how to push domestic tourism. Mm. It's, it's important because then borders are closed, the airport is closed, they are not yes. coming in. What should we do to boost domestic tourism? So I think we need to encourage and market our destinations to ourselves. If I took you to where I come from in Chihuahua and you look at the sceneries and hmm, beautiful sceneries, yes, I come from Chihuahua, has beautiful sceneries or even the activities like grazing cattle early in the morning or milking, all those amazing activities I think that yes. to us it's normal, it's cult, it's what we do every day, but to other people who have not been in such circumstances or background come don't come from such backgrounds i think it would be interesting for them true so true. you can design a menu and say today we're going to go to chihuahua in the morning at five we're going to milk at 10 we're going to graze the cattle at one we're going to maybe prepare food at three we're going to have i don't know you you can create something out of that yes, it an, doesn't an really need to be a game park or yeah, whatever true. so you can create an itinerary and it, it could be amazing or we go to the north Look at their culture. I've been to Moroto. I've, mm, I've seen how the Karamajong the culture. Karamajong culture. I've seen how the manetas are built. Amazing, ah. amazing structures. Um, they can be improved, so we can be able to learn about each other's cultures and traditions through domestic tourism. Mean, that that way it can be boosted. Yeah, that's that's so, very So maybe true. you should tr start giving tips on the show about what different cultures do so you can push domestic tours. That's true. Actually, by the way, Kanye, yeah. thank you. I have two videos. I have, a vi I have like three videos. Actually, I have a video where I interviewed the Miss Tourism where they're sharing about the Abusuka culture. I have an interview where I interviewed some lady where she's talking about the Baganda culture. And I'm, I plan to interview more people as we go deeper into the culture because culture is very rich. You know, and as, as Kanye said, it's one area that you can actually use to boost domestic and international tourism and while preserving our rich history. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's that's very true. So, can you, you have traveled, you have told me you have traveled around Uganda yeah, a traveled, lot. Yeah, I've traveled a lot. <clears throat> Which is that place you've been to that you feel anytime, any day, I will go here? Chobe. No doubt. Mm. Chobe is amazing. It's breathtaking. What, what was it about Chobe? Was it... The, I don't know. It's it maybe the freshness, the vegetation, the water, the beautiful sceneries. Chobe is also, Queen Elizabeth? Yeah. But also knowing that 
it's you're away from the traffic in Kampala, the noise just serenity. relaxes the mind, yeah, the serenity. So I think, yeah, I would go back anytime, any day. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. So as we conclude, which final words do you have for people out there who are watching you, for who are, you know, who are tourism enthusiasts? What, what tip do you have for them as they are, you know, moving through the post-COVID situation? What, what do you want them to go away with as they are thinking about tourism in Uganda? You can create your own tourism activity by just, I don't know, looking around you. I've created mine. I cycle around Kampala. Tell us about your cycle experience, so, your cycling yeah, expedition. I use it for two things. One, when I'm, when I'm walking during the week, of course, we have company cars that take us to our destinations and all, and you're busy maybe writing a script or what, so you never really get a chance to look at what is going the around. The beauty around. The beauty around. Like this on, on Kia Road here, from like Mulago to Kia Road Police Station, they've been able to place, I think they're like statues of animals, they're giraffes, oh, they're... They're making right. it a tourism street, actually. Yes. Yeah, a tourism I, street. I, I realized that when I started to cycle around Kampala. I use, it, I use cycling for two things. One, to keep fit, because I burn calories, but also to be able to look at Kampala. I never get a chance to really look at it. And so on a Sunday when there's less traffic, when there's less people in the town, I'm able to cycle about 20 kilometers and mm, then go back that's home. Good. Yeah, so I have music in my ears and it's a great experience because, I mean, it's a, it's a chance to look at Kampala and the developments that have happened over time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Canary. And thank you very much for having for allowing to be on my channel my and pleasure. I'm very excited I hope you travel more in Uganda Thank you. and we're going to look at how best to promote the, tur the domestic tourism but what are you going to do as an individual to promote domestic tourism I mean I have yeah, uh, a chance person. I have a chance that I have great following on social media yes. I think being able to push some of these destinations online to people to see so I can bring the destinations on the social media people can feel them and then get attracted to go and visit these destinations okay yeah. mr can you where can people find you people who are watching who wants to who want to follow you and get inspired oh can i'm going all through twitter instagram and facebook i'm all over okay hit me up and uh, let's chat about tourism okay thank you very much mr canary thanks for having and me thank you guys for watching if you like this this content hit me up in the inbox let me know what you think about this content follow mr canary i'm going to share all the different links of his Mugume. social media platforms mr canary mugume what did i say Mugsha. No, no. Don't worry, people say that a lot. They confuse <laughs> me with Kanura Mugsha. But <laughs> who is that? I don't, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I you would. You know the first one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. He's, I'm going to put all his links in the description box and follow him. And before, yeah, I think that's it for today. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.